In this presentation, we will understand how for loop works with else block. So, without any further delay, let's get started. The first topic of this presentation is introduction to the for loop with else block. The second topic is use of for loop with else block. So, let's get started with the first topic that is introduction to the for loop with else block. We have already understood what is the working of else block with while loop. We have learned this already that the else block will only be executed when the loop does not terminate abnormally because of the break keyword. The same thing applies to the for loop as well. In case of for loop, the else block will be executed only when the loop is not terminated abruptly or abnormally by the break keyword. This is exactly the same thing that happens in case of while loop. So, for loop else block and while loop else block are not different, they are same. The else block will only be executed when the loop is not terminated abruptly by the break keyword. Now, let's see the syntax of for loop with else block. This is how the syntax looks like. First, we have the usual for loop. This is for where in sequence. This is the for statement. And here, this comment is representing the statements inside for. Now, after this, we have the else block. This comment is representing the statements inside else. These statements will only be executed when the loop terminates normally, not abnormally because of the break keyword. I hope this is clear. Now, let's move on to the next topic that is use of for loop with else block. Now, let's understand what is the use of for loop with else block. We can understand this with the help of an example. Let's say that we have a list of favorite languages, the languages that we like the most. So, let's create a list of favorite languages. This is the list of favorite languages, which consists of a total of four languages. Python, C, Java and Ruby. These are my personal favorite languages. You can choose your languages. Now, this is the list we have. Let's say we want to check whether Java programming language is available in this list or not. If it is the case that Java programming language is available in this list, then we will print I like Java. If it is the case that Java programming language is not available in this list, then we will print I don't like Java. I hope the problem statement is clear. Now, let's solve this problem. We need for loop to iterate over this list. We need to compare each item with Java. If it is the case that Java programming language is available in this list, then we will print I like Java. So, let's write the for statement first. For language in fav languages. With this statement, we know that language variable will receive each language of this list one at a time. First language variable will receive Python, then C, then Java and then Ruby. We are well familiar with this concept of for loop with in keyword. Now, within this for loop, we need to check this condition. If Java is equal to the language, if it is the case that Java programming language is available in the list of favorite languages, then we will continue and print I like Java. Now, after this, we need this break keyword so that we can immediately break this loop or we can immediately terminate this loop because it does not make any sense to continue running this loop. As we got our language in the list, therefore we must break this loop immediately. Now we want to print I don't like Java when the loop terminates normally, not abnormally. We don't want to print I don't like Java when the break keyword is encountered. We want to print I don't like Java when the loop terminates normally, this means that when the loop has completely read the list. So, we need to create the else block. Within this else block, we need this statement, print I don't like Java. With the help of this print function, we would be able to print I don't like Java. This will only be printed when the loop terminates normally. 
So when this is printed, then this will not be printed. And when this is printed, then this will not be printed. I hope this is clear. Now let's execute this code line by line. Let's first execute this line of code. We know that the first language we receive here in this language variable is Python. So, language variable is now pointing to Python. Now, within this for loop, we need to check this condition. Is Java equal to language? Eventually, at runtime, this variable will be replaced by Python. So, we are comparing Java with Python. These two are not same. Therefore, we will get false here. Hence, these two statements will not be executed. I will get back to this line. This time, language variable is pointing to C. Now, we'll go inside this for loop. Here, we are checking Java with C. Is Java equal to C? No. This is false again. This means that these two statements will not be executed. Now, we will get back to this line. This time, language is pointing to Java. Now, we will check this condition. Is Java equal to Java? Yes. This time, Java is equal to Java. Therefore, the condition satisfies. This time, this statement will be executed. This means, I like Java will be printed on the screen. So, the output is, I like Java. After this, the break keyword is encountered. This means, now we have encountered the abnormal termination of this loop. After this break keyword, we know that the else block in this case will not be executed. So, we are done with this program. So, the output of this program is, I like Java. So, one thing is clear. When I like Java is printed on the screen, then I don't like Java will not be printed. And when this is printed, then this will not be printed. So, with this, we are done with this program as well. And we have understood how for loop works with else block. This means we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.